Psychiatry faces some major challenges this century. One is that mental illnesses remain one of the biggest disease burdens on mankind, mainly because they start in youth and they can affect people's whole lives. Another is that new treatments are scarce, uh, despite major recent research initiatives. And why is this? Well, many now question some fundamental assumptions in psychiatry, a major one being its classification system, its list of diagnoses. If this is wrong, if disorders like schizophrenia, depression, anxiety are not actually distinct entities with distinct causes, then this will hamper research into mechanisms and treatments. What this means is if the group of depressed subjects that I'm studying is actually a group of patients with four different kinds of mental problems who just look similar on the surface, I'm unlikely to find a treatment that works for any of them. But using computational methods, we are starting to get beyond surface symptoms to find underlying structure in complex data. Knowing this structure, this improved classification, means that we can do better research into causes of mental illness, better prediction of outcomes, and better drug trials. One example of this is my own project. I'm trying to use computational models to link subtle patterns of activity in brain imaging data to receptors on neurons that drugs can target. This could improve decisions about which treatments to recommend in individual subjects. The question is, can this really work? Well, yes, machine learning models are now performing at the level of expert doctors in diagnosing skin problems, for example. But this example is much easier because we already know the answers that we want to give the machine to give. So it's much simpler to teach it. In psychiatry, we have two problems. First, we're not even sure of what the right answers these diagnoses should look like. And second, the data are way more complex. Uh, there's a big difference between the amount of information in a brain scan and in a picture of a wart. Now, this can be overcome, but we need large amounts of high-quality data. This means many detailed measurements of many different kinds of many people over many time points. And this data is hard to acquire. Following the same subjects over time is difficult and expensive. So what needs to happen? Well, funders and policymakers need to work together to integrate this data collection into healthcare pathways. The UK has set a great example in funding the UK Biobank. This is an incredibly rich data set of half a million British people. However, we need more subjects with mental health disorders represented, and we need to follow them through life. Of course, by far the biggest and richest behavioral data sets out there are on the servers of tech companies like Facebook and Google. But we need to think very carefully about who should own these data and about how they might be used. We should also be aware of the coming hype. The next few years, we'll see many bold claims made about how some model can accurately diagnose some condition from complex data. My advice is, be very skeptical of models trained on small data sets like the one on the left. We will need sample sizes of thousands or more in order to do this well. And also be skeptical of any model that hasn't been validated on a completely new data set. Imagine I train a model to predict gender based on what people are wearing on me, Joe, and Suzanne. The model might learn that uh, men are wear people who wear white shirts. But this model will not perform well on a, an entirely new data set. But people often don't test their models like this. Also, be wary of over-medicalization of mental health issues. Technology such as brain imaging and machine learning is seductive and it's exciting. But it all implies that the problem is in the individual and that we just need technology to find it. To some extent, this may be true. But we don't need brain scanners to tell us that someone is underpaid and overworked or that they live without seeing green space or that their parents didn't have parenting skills. And we don't need computers to tell us what to do about those issues. So my final message would be mental health is the great medical challenge of the 21st century. From a neuroscience perspective, we need major funding in high quality data and hopefully computational methods will help us link this to new treatments.
But equally, we should never lose our focus on improving people's lives.